In this video, I'm going to talk about Picasa. Picasa is a image viewer by Google, which allows you to create a library of all of your pictures on your computer. You can then manage them, rename them, add metadata, search through your library, and also apply filters. It is split into mainly two views. There's this one, the library, where you can navigate your pictures, your folders, you can create albums to collect certain types of images together. And you can also attach metadata like people, places using Google Maps and tags to your images. You can also view the metadata using the properties panel. At the bottom of the UI, you have a selection panel. This one is mostly used to store selections, to star your pictures, to kind of tag them as favorite and to do a few operations that are not too important for us. In the image view, you can apply filters quickly to your images. You can view two pictures side by side and you can view the same image twice so that when you apply a filter, you can see the comparison before and after the filter was applied. That's about it. The view that's most important to us is this one. It's the library view. With this, you can organize your pictures for your project. Note that if you do operations like renaming the pictures or adding metadata, it's not being added only in Picasa. It's really changing the name on your computer. So these on the side are folders. For instance, I have a farm in here. If I double click, I can call it farm and precise that it's animals. And if I go to my Explorer on Windows, you can see that it did change the name of the folder itself. So you can really arrange and organize your pictures in there. I can rename multiple pictures at the same time in here using the F2 key. It's a common shortcut on many applications. You know, I can really manage my picture files and then reuse them on another computer and with another application if I want to. So I mostly use Picasa for that. I have references and I also have textures that I use from time to time for 2D or 3D game art. Let us talk about the library view. This is where you are going to spend most of your time. And this is the most useful one to organize your pictures. First of all, navigation. You can scroll with the mouse wheel to navigate up and down through your folders. You can see the light highlighting on the left side that tells you which folder you are currently viewing. And you also have the folder icon with um, the creation date, the name, and you can add a description as well if you want to. This bit of metadata gets attached to your folder. You can also click on a folder on the left column to access that folder directly, or you can also access an album. An album is basically a virtual collection of images, while a folder is actually a folder on your computer with pictures inside of it. So you can collect pictures from different folders in an album for a specific project, for instance. If you don't have that tree view, like me, you have to click on the icon at the top. Uh, the left one creates a folder structure that's just a list of folders, one after the other, and the second one forces the tree structure. It makes it so that because I respect the structure of your folders on the computer. You can see that actually I had just have a reference folder where I have subfolders. This is this exact structure that we are seeing in there, in the left column. I use that for navigation most of the time because I'm looking for pictures by theme. So I have places, I have human beings, I have uh, references from video games. You can also search by pressing Control F on your keyboard. This will activate the search bar and you can search for names, for folder names. For metadata, you can search for tags. You should be able to search for location. Let me see. Yeah, you can search for locations as well. You can see the little uh, Google map icon in there means that there's a location attached 
to those pictures. In all honesty, I don't use it too much, but uh, this can be pretty useful if you are working on a project that takes place in a specific country, or if you took pictures yourself from specific countries during your trips. To attach this kind of metadata to your pictures for searching, you have to use the icons at the bottom right of your interface. You can attach people, this one I don't use, but you can also attach places to your pictures. This is powered by Google Map. It works that way. Let me find a place that we can attach maybe in cities. Uh, I have pictures from Hong Kong in here. So I'm just going to type Hong Kong, search for it, and Google will ask me, do you want to attach the five photos to this location? I'd say yes. And then you can see the little icon that appears on the pictures. So this gives me the ability to attach pictures to a location. And then if I'm navigating back to that folder in my library, I can see where those pictures were taken. If I go back to the Liechtenstein folder, I can click in there and this will jump to the location in the maps tab on the side. Next up are tags. Tags are much more interesting than locations. And the reason is I can attach all kinds of tags like castle in here. All of those pictures are pictures of a castle. If I navigate anywhere, I can search for the tag. You can see the little icon, the tag castle, and it will filter all castles in my reference folder. I have a few tags in here, like cloudy skies. I can get all kinds of cloudy skies in a split second. That's what tags are for. And the properties panel, the last option, just shows the metadata of the picture. Uh, height was taken, all of the information that was recorded along with the picture. You can press escape at any time to cancel a search in your search bar. So if I'm looking for uh, rocks, for instance, in here, if I just press escape, I bounce back to the folder I was watching and um, it deactivates the search, so it shows all of the pictures in my library once again. Now let's talk about albums really quick. These are very easy to use. You can just select a range of pictures, right click, and you can add to album. It's the second option. And then you can either use an existing album, like this, or you can create a new album directly. I'm going to attach them to this existing album. You can see that the pictures now appear in my album and I can just press delete at any time to remove them from the album. It's just going to remove them from the album, not from the computer. However, if I'm in a folder in there and I press delete, it will send it to the recycle bean. The albums can be found at the top of the left column right there. You can navigate them really easily. You have your favorite pictures in there. You have the pictures that were recently changed, like moved or added to the library, and you have your own albums. There's something very important I have to talk about. It's selections. You know, if you're adding a tag or any bit of metadata, you are adding it to your selection. You can do a few things in Picasa, basically the same things as in your operating systems explorer. You can click to select a picture. You can click and drag to select a range of picture. You can control click to add or remove pictures to your selection, and you can combine it with a box selection. You can click and shift click to select a range of picture from the first one to the last one you clicked on. And then there's also that little widget at the bottom of the screen where you can hold items in your selection. I'm going to select these pictures and these. And I want to go to another folder somewhere else. And I want to tag the pictures that have a, you know, some kind of ocean blue tone, uh, a bit of turquoise almost in them. 
So I'm going to click on the little green button and you can see the icon that appears on the pictures and these are then held. The selection is being saved. So now I can scroll to another folder and I want to say that these pictures also have a blue that I'm interested in and I'm going to hold them and this allows me to not think about them anymore and I can go to other folders like these and just select pictures I'm interested in. So I can really scroll in my library. Okay, I just have to click, shift, click in there to select all of the pictures held in the widget and I can tag them. So I'm going to tag them as blue. I can add the tag and now if I look for that blue tag, now if I look for the tag blue and I click on it, you can see that we get the pictures I just tagged. You can use that widget to just navigate your reference library and tag them all. Uh, one thing I have not mentioned with selections is that you can just move your pictures in a folder by just clicking and dragging on your selection. And you can obviously move them from one folder to another and it will move the pictures from a folder to another on your computer. There's one last thing I want to show you, it's how to use Picasa with your ref. I have pure ref open here, you can see that I already loaded a picture into it. And let's say I want to add some references to it. It's really simple, I just have to click and drag my pictures from Picasa onto pure ref and they will be added automatically. That's why I like to use Picasa, I can search really easily using the metadata I have. Let's say I'm working on a game with castles and I want to use this castle from the Liechtenstein, which is very famous. I can just look out for them using the tag I created and then drag and drop them into Pure Ref. That's how I use Picasa and Pure Ref together. I told you about the image view. In all honesty, I don't use it. But if you want to look into it, there's a documentation on Google's website. It just allows you to apply simple filters on your pictures. I'd rather use Photoshop or Lightroom, which I have in here. Or you can use GIMP. It will probably be a bit better than that. That's it. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next video where we'll talk about PureRef.